What's the word, y'all? Things are about to get really, really toxic. A couple days ago, I asked y'all if you want to see a video of me going to a subreddit of a team that just lost a game and just reading and reacting to what the fans have to say. We've all been there. Our team win a big game. We feel like nobody in the league can really mess with us, but we lose a bad one, and we want to trade everybody. We want the coach fired. We want the front office to step down. We, we want the owners to sell the team. And that uh, team that we're going to be looking into the subreddit of today is the Boston Celtics. Now, the Boston Celtics are not the only team to lose a game today, but they probably have the worst loss of the night. They were up. They were up 100 to 89 with seven minutes to go, and they ended up losing the game 109 to 105. Uh, they did not score field goal in the last seven minutes of the game. And you know what? If this was like a one-off thing, there's no big deal. But the Boston Celtics are the worst fourth quarter team in the entire league. And I know the fans are fed up. I have to say this because I know there's going to be some people that watch this video that believe I'm a Celtics hater because you're new around here. I am not. I'm just here for the comments. You feel me? Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I Listen, all the toxicity today I'm here for. Celtics fans, I apologize. But you're subject number one in this type of video. You feel me? Leave a like if you love this idea. And maybe I'll bring it again later. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Hit that link in the description. Download the app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits up to $100 for new players. Loki, one of my favorite things about Prize Picks is they're continuing to take suggestions, right? When we first started a few months ago, they didn't have a search bar. Now they do. If I want to specifically go to Joel Embiid and look at his points, rebounds, and assists, I can do that by just typing in Joel Embiid. It is just you versus the numbers. You see some of your favorite players, you pick over and under on your props and it's super easy and then recently they had another really big update and now they have points plus rebounds plus assists all together then blocks plus steals together alice caruso i love you my boy blocks plus steals i'm taking the over hit that link in the description and join the thousands of people that already use code kenny thank you again to prize picks for sponsoring this video and pretty much every video at this point we love you so this is where things start at the boston celtics subreddit you got the daily discussions that's no big deal you got the post game thread we have to get into that because um the game ended two hours ago it's a random regular season game in January, and it's got 350 comments from Boston Celtics fans. Unfortunately, the vibes are continue to deteriorate. But this is not where I want to go. I want to go by new, because people are, are really full of emotions right now. They just blew another game. Almost 50 games in. How? What are your thoughts on Ime Yudoka? Celtics fans, let me know in the comment section. I'm not reading that, though. Aha! This is the content we're here for. My top five C's L's so far. This man has gone so far off the edge that he's ranking the losses on the season. So, you got the Wolves December 27th. I don't remember that one. You got this one tonight. You got January 6th, which I think is the RJ Barrett game winner. That was crazy. You got the Cavaliers November thir uh, 13th. And then the Bulls November 1st. Now, the Bulls, were, in my mind, started all of this for the Celtics. They blew a crazy lead. They had uh, player-only meetings. And there was a lot of rumors. And bada-boom, bada-bam. Pretty much all characterized by blown late third, fourth quarter leads. Featuring an anem anemic? Oh, y'all got college degrees out there. I ain't never seen that word. Offense is late. What's your ranking? And the top comment says, Ime being hired has to be in the top five. Celtics fans, let me know in the comment section what you think about Ime Yudoka. I know this is a weird question considering all the things that have bad have happened. Um, is he the problem? I, I don't really know. I'm not tuned in that much to tell you. Oh, Ime Yudoka exits and knows. I know I've seen a lot of Boston Celtics fans really upset with his lineups and his rotations, for sure. Um, and that could be one of the problems. But Jason Tatum is zero for his last 20 from three. Lands him three of 26 in his last five games. And he attempted a step back three. We're down by one, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of this game. I, I, I'm just saying. It can't all be me. <laughs> it can't all be Mr. Udoka. Um, but yeah, this stretch is ridiculous. Now, every player goes through slumps for sure. I'm not blaming Jason Tatum for the blown lead or anything. But he has to take a part of it considering he is the star player. And he got the last shot. Somebody else got their own little ranking here. Okay. 25 point blown lead against the New York Knicks. 19 against the Bulls, 19 against the Cavs, collapse in San Antonio, Christmas Day in Milwaukee, Jalen misses layup at the buzzer beater, I forgot about, now that one's one I forgot, Portland at home, that is right now, losing to the G League Wolves and Clippers, I don't remember those, blown lead in OT and Washington in the opener versus Toronto, mm, 10, these are 10 games that Boston Celtics fans um, hey, I mean, every loss is a bad, I mean, not every loss is a bad loss. Every loss means something, but these means more to them because 
when you're up by 25 majority of the times it should be secure when you're up by 19 in the fourth quarter it should be or late in the third quarter it should be secure and the same thing with this Cavs game Eme is a real bad coach am I pronouncing bro's name right I feel like I'm disrespecting him because I'm not completely sure does he not watch film you would think after all these games he would try to adjust but he doesn't we still run with double big lineups and I hope we go in a different direction how you're a new coach in the offseason I saw a report a little while ago um, where somebody called Ime Udoka Jim Boyland. And I, I, I had flashbacks from just reading the name on, on Reddit. Um, because I forget exactly what he did. Oh, here it is. Ime Udoka equals Jim Boyland 2.0. Now, I'm, I'm just saying, that's bold. <laughs> to say anybody is even on the level of Jim Boylan is, is very disrespectful. Let's see what he says. As all of my fellow Bulls fans can attest, this is not a compliment. Absolutely, it is not. I definitely don't think the current iteration of the Celtics is easy to coach, but their raw talent is unmistakable. The old school style of coaching clearly isn't working. Calling the timeout with 7.3 seconds left down by nine, because why exactly? Because they didn't play hard enough in the last 40 seconds? What do you even say in the huddle? Uh, the, the Jim Boylan did that a few times in his tenure in Chicago with the Bulls be down by 20 points with 30 seconds to go he'll call timeout try to drop a play or whatever and he kind of saw that as like ah i still believe no matter what we got fight and it's about teaching it's about teaching it's about teaching zach levine he didn't say it but he did say it like what is you doing i, I vividly remember a moment with jim boylan called timeout with the bulls being down by so much and jim uh, and then they zoomed in on zach levine and he was like what the hell or something like that so this is uh rough the fact that he put ennis and al out together to start the third is is the actual issue Guys' rotations are brained in. This is the toxicity I've been looking for. I'm sure there are some people in Celtics fandom that is team, we don't need both of these guys because they're not playing well. Um, the Jays turn into superstar and near superstar. How long has it have we been saying that? If anyone's still waiting for that, good luck. And he mentions the other guys, Romeo Langford, Neesmith, Grant, and, and Fast PP. Turn it to near stars. Um, good luck with that one too. Having Rob is good, but I think he's about where he'll be. This guy, this this redditor, is basically about giving up on all of the young talent, saying that Robert Williams is exactly what it's gonna be. He doesn't see him getting much better. He doesn't know or he doesn't see the Jays turning into a superstar or a near superstar. And the top comment is, how long? Tatum is 23 years old. He's four years away from entering his prime. Are you gonna be happy with these results for the next four years? I think that's a valid question. I'm not saying I agree with either way, but he's saying he's four years away from being in his prime. But are you going to be happy with these results for the next four years? We've been able to surround the Jays with talent in the past because they were on rookie deals. Very interesting take. You had Gordon Hayward, you had Al Horford, you had Marcus Smart, you had Kyrie Irving. All of that while Jason Tatum was making pennies on the dollar, right? We've got to trade one of them to make any significant difference. Ooh, -hoo, this is getting spicy. Uh, you do not trade the Jays until you trade literally everybody else. I think I'm team this. I think I'm team this. I think I'm team this. Literally everyone else has no trade value. I'm, I think I'm team, keep the Jays around until you, you get a point guard, until you do this, until you do that. But it's good to see an active conversation that doesn't look like it's getting too toxic. And then it did. Okay, we're getting out of here. <laughs> and then it did. <laughs> At this point, just tank. Let's face it, this team isn't good enough to do anything this year. It's obviously we'll be trading a good amount of guys the deadline. So why compete for a play-in just to lose in the first round again? Rebuild the team, regroup, and come back stronger next year. It's a bit too late to tank. We probably land the 13th pick according to Tankathon, and the Celtics can't draft in the middle of the round, so probably another bench warmer. Yeah. yeah! I mean, I mean, I know that there's new management. I guess it's Brad Stevens out there um, doing the GM stuff, and it's not Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge has drafted Robert Williams. I'm not Robert Williams. Well, he did do that, but like Grant Williams, Fast PP, Romeo Langford, all in the realm of like the teens in the early 20s and stuff, and none of those guys have developed into anything more than like maybe solid role players at the, at the bench, you know what I'm saying? So this guy has a point. I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong, but I'm glad to see that people are having a conversation. Ooh, 300 votes on this one. Has this season changed your opinion on whether or not Jason Tatum can lead us to a title? Assuming Lee means he's the clear cut best guy on the team. Um, from me, this is me. This is, I'm not voting for Celtics fans. This is Kenny Beecham, the, the outsider looking in. <sighs> I still think he could. He's 23, 24. I think he still could. And majority of people say, yeah. Um, some people still say, I no longer think he can lead us. And about 60 people said, I never thought he was going to be the guy. That's a good poll to put up. And I was 301st vote. And Mike Will read it. 
that's not that's not a bad username my boy he's 23 years old and having by far the worst three-point shooter season that is clearly an outlier compared to his first four seasons we don't have a good roster built around him either i'll change my mind when he's 28 with a good roster around him and we still can't win until then i believe in him just need to get the right players beside him i'm on that level too Woo! let's get it spicy you can all crucify me but tatum is not that guy since jt has been the alpha a number one option on this team we've been under five we've been an under 500 ball club he consistently has the ball in his hands to make decisions and he often doesn't make the play or revert to an iso i have this lecture by the way so anytime you see me misread something please don't make fun of me <laughs> please don't make fun of me um, when you're that guy, it's your responsibility to grab the team and settle them down at the end of the game. He'll take every single end of the game shot until, until without even trying to get to the rim or make a play for anyone else. Okay, this is a point. I personally, I did not watch the first three quarters. I watched the end. But this guy says, did you watch the first three quarters? Tatum playing point guard and generating open looks for everyone else on the court is what has got, got us back into this game, into the league twice. See, I didn't know that. I let, What this guy repeat? And lastly... Let's get to the post-game thread. This is where I expect to see a bunch of, uh, a lot, a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, then, and the number one thing is, you don't win professional basketball games by going out for nearly seven minutes scoring droughts to end the game, you stupid, figure it out. Celtics have the two, two most overrated stars in the NBA. There, I said it. Somebody said Julius Randle. Nobody overrates Randle anymore. I think that's true. I feel like most people are anti Randle. Not anti Randle, but off the Randle bandwagon for sure. Um, but hey, he's in the Celtics suburb. Now, that doesn't mean he's a Celtics fan just because he's in here. I'm in here too, and I'm not a Celtics fan. So this could be just somebody coming in and stirring up some ruckus, but um, whatever. Absolute galaxy brain move by JT to take a step back three down one when 10 seconds ago when he is zero for five for the night from three. He was zero for his last 19 at that point. LMAO. He hasn't hit a three in over a week. Ah, that's tough. Please end the email experiment, Brad. Dude is dumber than a bag of bricks. He has some of the worst coaching challenges I've ever seen, and it happens a lot. We would have had a timeout and advanced the ball on that last play. Shaking my head. Now, this is something that I didn't really think about too much. I mean, if you, if you challenge a play and you're unsuccessful, you don't have the timeout, and they needed a timeout to advance that play. So... Um, I guess it's hindsight at the end of the day. Oh, he shouldn't have he shouldn't have challenged that. I don't know. Mike and Scal were speechless at the end. That was true. I watched the Celtics broadcast for that specific reason because Scalabrini is definitely a heavily opinionated, heavily homer type commentator. So I was very curious to what he was gonna say at the end of this one, and they didn't say anything. He was like, oh, the, he said like uh, the um the Portland Trail Blazers win a game here in Boston. He ain't even mentioned the fact that they blew that lead or that they ain't scored in seven minutes or had a field goal in seven minutes. No, they were just like. I'm ready to go home, and I respect that. <laughs> all right, man. Um, the toxicity was an all-time high. We got to cleanse ourselves. So for the next week or so, I won't do this. Unless. <laughs> no, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.